God is good. It's time for the word. It's time for the word. And if you have your Bibles with you, your smartphones, however you read the word of God, we're going to go all the way to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. I just feel that worship in my heart. Just simply say, because he you're with me. We bless you, Jesus. Because you are with me. Because you are with me. I will not fear. Oh, I will some you we lift you up God I will exalt you oh my I will exalt you somebody tell the Lord today say you are my God my hiding place my hiding place my safe refuge my treasure lord you are my friend and king anointed one most My treasure, Lord, you are, you are my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. Yes, God. Because you Somebody declare it today, right where you are. Because God is with me, oh God. Because you're with me, oh, I will not fear. I will. Not fear, oh no, I will not fear. Come on, somebody touch yourself and just say that. Say, I will not fear, I will not fear. Come on, say it a few more times. Just tell yourself, say, I will not fear. Oh, no. I will not fear. Somebody needs to receive that today. Somebody receive it. I will not fear. Come on, for the last time, everybody say, I will not we thank you God that you're with us we thank you that you are in us you are all around us and we will not fear hallelujah hallelujah bless the name of the Lord bless the name of the Lord Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 then God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle 
over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. I want you to touch yourself. If you're sitting next to somebody, I want you to look at them and tell them with all authority and all the faith that you can muster up. I want you to make a declaration today. I got the power. I got the power. I got the power. Listen, all creation displays God's design, God's power, and God's goodness. All of creation, everything that God has made, uh, it displays God's goodness, God's design, God's power. But only human beings, only mankind are said to be made in the image of God. Uh, a full theology of the image of God is beyond our scope today. We, we can't get into the whole scope of God's image and what that means. But I want to leave some encouragement for you in faith month as we talk about faith and our belief in God and what God has done for us and what God wants to do for us and what he wants to do through us. We've got to understand that we've got power. I've got the power, got the power. And, and, and so even though we can't go deep into the whole scope of the image of God, I, I want us to simply know that every person, uh, every person that is alive is designed with something that is just like God. There is something about us that is uniquely like him. Hallelujah. And as we live more and more in his presence and as we submit and surrender more and more to his likeness, we are becoming more like him. We're not him, but we are becoming more like him. I want you to consider two truths, two truths today. Number one, the first truth that I want you to consider, I want you to write this down because these truths are, are powerful. They are mind blowing. They are liberating. The first truth is every human is a special being. Every human is a special being. Touch yourself and tell yourself, I am special. If nobody's told you in a long time that you are special, then I'm telling you today that you are special. But more than me telling you that you are special, God's word says that you are special. Every person is a special being. We are a product of God's creative power. That's why you're special. You're special because God created you. Not a random evolution. No, 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 no. Man did not evolve. We did not evolve from a, a single celled organism over the space uh, of millions of years. No, not at all. Uh, man is the special creation of God. Every human being, uh, every woman, every man, every boy, every girl is the special creation of God. God. Uh, notice that all other animal life uh, was spoken into existence uh, by the word of God. Man, however, when it came to mankind, uh, man was formed. Man was formed uh, out of the dust of the earth uh, and God personally blew his life force, Ruach. Uh, he blew his spirit into man and man became uh, a living soul. Every human being uh, is a special being. Uh, and so the greatest danger in the entire system of evolution uh, as it is taught to our children in the public schools uh, is that if people can believe uh, or be convinced that humanity uh, is nothing more than a product of random selection, then we have lost uh, all value. We've lost uh, uh, the value of life and who we really are. We've lost that specialness, that distinctiveness, that we are distinguished and we were carefully made. The psalmist said, I, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. Yes, yes. Uh, Paul tells the Ephesians uh, that we are God's masterpiece. 
We are God's masterpiece. A masterpiece is the artist's greatest accomplishment. The artist has so many pieces that he has, but his masterpiece is his greatest accomplishment. And that's what Paul declares to the Ephesians and prophetically declares over every believer, every person that you, you are God's masterpiece. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what people know about you no matter how many mistakes you've made no matter how many mistakes you're still making there's good news today you yes you 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 and you you are God's masterpiece every human being is a special being hallelujah the second truth is that every human is a special a spiritual being every human is a spiritual being we are told that man was made in the image of God the essence of God in God's image uh, image is a reflection and so uh, uh, when you look at man you see God we are created in the image of God uh, this does not mean uh, uh, that man or uh, that God is human or God looks like a man uh, or God looks uh, has human features no 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 God God has no ears he has no hands uh, when God refers to us and speaks to us he speaks to us in human terms uh, because that's what we can understand but God is spirit God is spirit and so when we talk about being created in the image of God we're talking about that spiritual aspect of who we are man was created like God in that God is a triune being and so man is a triune being God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit and in man there is spirit there is soul and there is body God is a three-part being man is a three part being God has intellect he has will and emotions and so does humanity every human being has intellect will and emotion and so uh, this is the primary way uh, in which humanity can be distinguished uh, uh, from the members of the animal kingdom uh, every person who ever comes uh, into this world uh, is, is coming into this world uh, as a triune being they have a body uh, they have a soul uh, and they have a spirit and, and and so when we look at the body the body is the vehicle your body my body is the vehicle through which we move and interact with the world that, that that's the body it is the body that provides a home for the soul and the spirit while we are in this world but our bodies are decaying our bodies will soon return to the dust when we look at the soul the soul then is the seat of the will the character the intellect the thoughts and the emotions your desires your aspirations uh, that that's the soul the soul the soul is where we reason uh, it's where we love and where we hate uh, the soul is what we refer to uh, when we speak of our mind our mind uh, the soul the soul stimulates uh, the body and allows us to interact uh, with the world and with other people that's that's the soul and so in short your soul is that part of you that makes you who you are your soul makes you self-conscious yeah soul makes you self-conscious and 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 the soul makes you world conscious and and the body allows the soul to be expressed and then we come to the spirit and, and while the soul makes us uh self-conscious the spirit uh, makes us god conscious your spirit is what makes you God conscious every man that is born into this world every woman every person that is born into this world is born into it spiritually dead because of Adam's sin because of the fall of man there is that part of mankind of humanity that is spiritually 
dead. We have a spirit. But until we accept Jesus Christ, that spirit part of us is dead. And after salvation, our spirit comes to life. New life within a person begins to transform the soul and then control the body. These changes within the spirit and the soul demonstrate themselves in the actions of our body. Hallelujah. That's why the first thing you got to deal with is your spirit. We spend so much time on this body, this dirt that's decaying. We make it up. We try to make it look good. We focus so much on it and oftentimes our spirit is dead or our spirit is dry. You got to focus on your spirit because it is the spirit that makes you God conscious. It, it makes you spiritual. And, and so uh, man was created, humanity created uh, to exercise power and designed to do three things. If you're writing, uh, write this down. Every person was designed to manage, uh, to supervise, and to direct. You were born and you were created uh, and God is forming you and making you uh, so that you can manage, uh, you can supervise uh, and you can, uh, you can direct and all of this is at your discretion. God has given humanity that ability to manage their world, uh, to supervise their life uh, and to direct their steps uh, at their discretion. It's called autonomy. God has given us a level of autonomy. He created us with dominion. The word dominion comes from the Hebrew word radar, which means to subjugate. Uh, it means to control. Uh, it means to comprehend, to hold under yeah and, and and so god's intention uh, was to extend his rulership uh, from the spiritual realm to the natural realm from the unseen to the seen yeah verse 26 god said let us make man uh, in our image according to our likeness uh, and then look at what he says and let them have dominion uh, let them have dominion what does that statement represent what, what, what does that verse represent this is the first declaration uh, of God's intention for you and me the first thing God says uh, that God says that he intends for us uh, to have power our purpose our assignment uh, our potential and design calls for dominion if we are going to be who God has designed us to be, we must have dominion. And the first thing that God gives man is power. Somebody touch yourself and say, I got the power. I can manage, I can function, and I can succeed. Come on, it's a faith declaration. I want you to speak it over your life. Speak it over your family. I can manage. I can manage. I'm not falling apart. I can function and I can succeed. And this is the intention of God. This is what he's intended for me from the very beginning. From the moment that he blew breath into the nostrils of Adam his intention was that we manage that we function and we succeed it still is the primary intention and the priority of God hallelujah and hallelujah and so in the beginning uh, we see that man the human uh, was both created and made uh, created and made both of these words uh, are important and are distinctively different uh, in the Hebrew in the Hebrew I'm going to give you a little bit of, of Hebrew today uh, when we look at the Hebrew language especially at creation uh, creation and made uh, are distinctively different yeah uh, let's look at creation the word created uh, comes from the Hebrew word bara b-a-r-a -A. you won't come to bible study so bible study is coming to you mm-hmm Bara. Bara means to create. Uh, and look at the meaning of it. There are many meanings uh, to the word bara. Uh, it, it means to create, to produce. It means to carve and to cut out. Yeah. Carving or cutting out. It is the production uh, or the accomplishment of something rare something new something wonderful and we see it uh, we see it in initial creation uh, uh, Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God bara 
in the beginning God bara in the beginning God created in the beginning God cut out in the beginning God carved in the beginning God produced something new something rare with no existing blueprint or materials we see it in the creation of conscious life Genesis 1:21 so God created bara sea creatures and every living thing then we see it in the creation of man in the verse that we just read so God created bara man in his own image God cut man out God carved the man out he created him male and female he created them and let me just say this uh, when we use the term man we're not referring to gender we're referring to the new special species uh, that God created man man is both ma male and female female uh, he created them and so when you when you see man women females don't feel that you've been left out no 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 it's not talking about gender it's talking about a new species uh, of humanity that is known as man uh, in his cre in his image he created a male and female he created them in the day that God created man he made him in the likeness of God he created the male and female and blessed them and called them mankind he called them man he called both Eve and Adam man in the day they were created and so that word created uh, bara it means newness uh, it means something uh, uh, that has not previously existed God stood on nothing uh, looked at nothing uh, and carved out something uh, out of nothing uh, that's why if you feel like you got nothing going on her uh, God will create something uh, out of your nothingness this is the power of our God uh, he will create something new uh, something original something rare bara also means effortless uh, effortless means that it is done uh, with a level of confidence ability and grace uh, and so God knew exactly what he was doing uh, when he carved you out hallelujah when he carved out the manna uh, he did it with confidence uh, he did it with grace and ability God knows what he's doing in your life from the very beginning of time to this very day God knows what he's doing Job declares it he knows the way that I take yeah bara also means instantaneous action it's sudden and immediate when God gets ready to do something to create a path for you it's sudden and immediate God does not hold a conference with anybody God does not ask ask anybody's permission it is sudden and it is immediate and then bara also means divine it's divine activity that means uh, creation is always and only the work of God creation to create uh, something from nothing uh, is divine ability and no matter how man tries uh, man is not the creator there is only one creator and he creates uh, according to his divine uh, ability so there we see the word created uh, then we come to the word made the word made in the Hebrew is the word asa yeah, it sounds, uh, uh, the way it sounds is, is exactly what it means. It sounds like aha. Yeah, asa, A S A R. And uh, asa means to form, it means to shape uh, something that is already created. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. And so God bars us, He cuts and carves us out. Uh, but God does not just leave you uh, in a carved state. Uh, then He begins the process of asa. He begins to form form you and shape you his hands are on you he's he's making you into what you ought to be you are now unique now he's he's causing the distinctiveness of your design and your purpose to be seen I saw this is what God showed Jeremiah when he told him to go down to the potter's house he was forming Asa. He was forming a worker on the wheel. Uh, Asa means to make. Uh, it means to advance. Asa means to appoint, uh, to become. Asa means to bear. It means to execute. Uh, and most of all, Asa means to bring 
forth or to present to present and so look at it in the beginning God creates man he cuts him and carves him out very much like a sculptor gets a piece of wood huh, and he cuts it out huh, and carves it out huh, uh, uh, and you don't really know what it is uh, because there are rough edges it's it's cut out huh, and it's there but then uh, the sculptor begins to form he begins to chisel away he begins to shape uh, he begins to shape it and after he has shaped uh, that beautiful eagle uh, from that piece of wood uh, he now presents it Asha. that's what God is doing in your life and some of us are uh, uh, in the process of a saw God is is still making you uh, that's why uh, you can't have what you want right now uh, because his hands are still on you uh, the process is not over yet uh, but in every situation uh, creation uh, or being made I got the power I've got the power and so man is an integration a combination uh, of both uh, being created and being made I was created to worship him but he's making me into a greater worshiper I was created to rule my world and every day he's forming me and showing me how I can rule and manage my world and function and succeed the spirit of man comes directly from God the spirit of man that's where the nature of God lies that's the true image of God it's it's the source the spirit of God is the source of man's spirit we were created in the image of God and the word image here it does not refer to physical likeness no and so God does not look like me God is not black and he's not white God does not have a big nose and big lips no God is spirit God is spirit the word image uh, in 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 the Hebrew does not refer to physical likeness but it means nature it means characteristic and guess get this it means essence so we are created uh, in the image in the essence of God we have the essence of God in your spirit in your spirit not in your flesh is the essence of God the essence of God, that creative force, that grace, that ability, that supernatural ability is in your spirit. That's why you got to strengthen your spirit. That's where the power lies. That effortlessness, that grace, that supernatural ability is in your spirit. You are created with the essence of God God blew uh, into Adam he ruacked uh, into him his spirit and so uh, the man mankind humanity however you want to name it uh, is an expression of God's moral and spiritual nature uh, how can we put it another way that means humanity is in the God class we are in the God class class I am in the God class you are in the God class that means we are placed above uh, and beyond all other created things uh, uh, the psalmist picks it up in Psalm 8 when he says what is man that you are mindful of him uh, and the son of man uh, that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you've crowned him with glory and honor you have made him to have radar to have dominion over the works of your hands you have put all things under his feet somebody touch yourself and say I got the power he has put all things under our feet that is the intention of God is that there is nothing above you you are above your circumstances you are above your situation everything is under your control that's what your spirit knows that's what your spirit is trying to tell your soul and your soul is trying to con control that unruly body but we're spending so much attention to our 
body and our soul uh, that we can't even hear what our spirit is saying uh, so you're in a calamity uh, and you start to deal with it according to your mind uh, or according to your intellect uh, no 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 you'll never find success uh, you gotta dig into the essence of God uh, you gotta go into the essence where the spirit of God uh, communes with your spirit uh, that's where the solutions are that's where the answer is and so God places mankind in the God class places him in the earth and gives him responsibility to represent him in the earth that's what we call an ambassador uh, humanity the man is the ambassador of God God created him God carved him out and God is forming him and then God says let them have dominion let them have dominion over the earth God has always been a giver God has always been a giver let them have dominion now now what, what is God doing right there we call that in theological terms divine transfer somebody say divine transfer divine transfer that that's what's happening when God says let them have uh, God gives power away my God my God God gives power away come on I got the power because God said let them have what we have let them have dominion my God uh, it is a divine transfer of power and authority uh, from heaven to earth earth uh, uh, from God to man from the unseen to the seen realm God delegated management of the earth to humanity management the ability to control to function to succeed to administer God has given that authority to man let them have dominion in this statement God established his relationship with the earth his relationship with the earth will be through man anything that God is going to do in the earth he's going to do it through man I got the power that's what I've been trying to tell you uh, and we don't even know that we have the power we don't act like we've got the power anything that God wants to be done in the earth he's gonna do it through you uh, he's gonna do it through me everything necessary to fulfill your assignment has already been provided and guess what you have a right to it you have a right to everything that God has provided everything that God has has assigned you to do he's given you the power he has provided the authority for it to come to pass and you have a right to it you have a right to manage you have no right to fall apart oh my god you have a right to succeed you do not have permission to fail somebody catch that tell yourself I got the power it's called a dominion mandate it's called a dominion mandate uh, look at first Corinthians 3 verse 22 huh? Paul tells them huh? all things are yours right there in the Bible it says it all things are yours the world or life or death or things present or things to come all are yours I got the power Job says uh, in 20 in Job 22 verse 28 God tells Job you shall decree a thing and it shall be established and light shall shine on your path uh, God tells Job you shall decree you shall speak a thing whatever you speak it shall be established whatever you decide it shall be established you shall make a decision and whatever decision you make it shall be established and light will shine on your path look at this one Psalm 115 verse 16 says the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's but the earth he has given 
given. That word given in the Hebrew is the word Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. It means to bequeath, a gift. So the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has bequeathed. He has gifted. He has Nathan to the children of men. And, and so what does that mean? It means that humanity, uh, man uh, is the only legal authority uh, on earth with the power of attorney to act on God's behalf. You have all power to act on God's behalf because you were created as a reflector. You were created with the essence in the image, the nature, the DNA of God is in your spirit. It's in your spirit, not in your flesh. Your flesh is just a house. Your flesh is just the vehicle that gets you from where you are to where you need to be. But when you get to where you're going, you get out of the car and you begin to function. You don't, it don't matter how pretty the car is, it don't matter how good the car is, the, the car it's not made for you to function in the car. The car is there as a vehicle to get you to your destination. We're spending so much time in the car that we're not even getting to the destination. Get to the destination. Get to your destination. Find your place in life. When you get there, God has given you the power to manage it. God has given you the power to function and he's given you the power to succeed. It's in your spirit because your spirit is the essence of your God that's why it does not matter what happens to you the Bible says a good man falls but a few times but he gets back up why because the essence of God gets him back up uh, the Bible says uh, speaking prophetically uh, about Jesus you will not suffer your holy one to see corruption neither will you leave his soul in hell no because the essence of God is in him uh, the psalmist says where can I go from your presence if I make my bed in hell even there you are there because I'm created uh, with the essence of God that means I'm a winner I'm an overcomer I can do all things through Christ uh, who gives me strength what I'm trying to tell you is I got the power got the power you got to use that power that you have you've got to use that power if you want to see it you must decree it mm. you want to see it you must decree it because God said let them have dominion over the earth he transferred power and authority of the earth to mankind let them have dominion ah, ah. let them all power belongs to God but God has delegated that he's given power and God is not a micromanager He's not micromanaging man. He's created us with his essence. And so we have his spirit that gives us direction, that leads us into everything that is godly. But if it's going to happen in this realm, it's going to happen through a man. And remember, I'm not talking about a male. I'm talking about that new rare species that God created when he carved out Adam and then carved out Eve. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen through a man or a woman yeah God is waiting on you you are not waiting on God God is waiting on you to get up uh, and to command your morning uh, to get up and rule your life and rule your day uh, and rule your destiny you've got the power to do it you got to decree it you got to decree it uh, God never does anything in the earth outside of man it would be illegal. It would be illegal for God to do anything in the earth outside of man without the cooperation of man even in redemption even when man chose against God and sinned and fall in order for God to redeem man he had to use a man that's why Jesus was born Jesus Jesus was born of Mary but Christ is from God so even in redemption 
in order for God to redeem the earth uh, and to fix what had, had gone wrong in the earth uh, he had to do it through man and so the Bible says in the fullness of time Jesus came forth born of a virgin full of the Holy Ghost God in man man is the only legal agent on this earth let me put it this way if it's going to be it's up to me somebody tell yourself that if it's going to be it's up to me I'm trying to get you to understand the power that you have in your spirit the power that you have because you are created in the essence and in the image of God you want to see it happen you must decree it you got to say something say something uh, say something uh, uh, he said if you say to the mountain uh, uh, the prodigal son said uh, I will arise and go back to my father the woman with the issue of blood said uh, if I only touch uh, the hem of his garment blind Bartimaeus cried out uh, he said something uh, and as soon as they said something uh, their situation changed your situation is waiting for you to speak to it that colossal mountain is waiting for you to speak to it let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich let the sick say I am healed let the bound say I am delivered you gotta say something because I got the power you got the power you got the power you got to use your power you got to use your power my prayer for you and my instruction for you is that you start seeing yourself as God sees you seeing yourself as God designed and as God sees you if God has given us the right of making declarations it means that we have authority if God says good let, 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 let's go back to Job 22 if, if God says to Job you have the power Power to decree a thing if God says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established it means that you Job are a king it means that you are in a position of authority because a decree is defined as an official order that is issued by a person with legal delegated authority I'm going to say that all again. A decree is defined as an official order or commandment that can only be issued by someone who is in a place of authority, delegated authority. A decree is more than just gossiping. When you decree something, it's more than just speaking stuff into the air. When you decree, it means that you are a king. If God says uh, you shall decree a thing, uh, it means you have authority. It means that you are in a position to make changes. I'm trying to wake somebody up this Sunday and let you understand that you have the power to do something uh, about your situation. If you say to the mountain, uh, be uprooted and cast into the sea and you have faith in your heart even if it's just a little bit of faith it shall be done it shall be done because uh, you have authority uh, decrees are made from a place of authority like a throne the king sitting on a throne makes a decree and it must be followed out what am I trying to tell you go find your throne your throne is waiting for you uh, to come and sit on it and make some decrees uh, over your life over your marriage over your family uh, over your world over your community uh, ah, and then he says and light shall shine on your path you shall decree a thing uh, and it shall be established and light uh, shall shine on your path that means not only do you have the authority to make decisions but you will also receive the wisdom and the understanding to understand the process and the strategy necessary to see that thing through to fulfillment he says and light shall shine on your path light wisdom 
knowledge, understanding will be given to you so that you understand the process. You understand the strategies that are necessary to bring that decree to fulfillment. This is the power that God has given you. Uh, look at what he says. Uh, Paul tells the Romans. Uh, he says, uh, for if by one man's offense, Adam, death reigned because of what Adam did, because Adam uh, bequeathed, he gifted his authority that God had gifted him. Uh, he gave it to the enemy gave it to the enemy then the bible says uh, that by that offense death reigned as a ruler because he gave away his dominion <clears throat> he gave away his ability to dominate to manage to function and to succeed uh, and death reigned uh, through one man uh, look at what paul says much more those who have received uh, abundance of grace uh, and of the gift of righteousness will do what will reign in life uh, through the one jesus christ what am i telling you that when you be when you're born again you have the right to reign when you're born again, you become a king. You become a king. You become a ruler. There is a king in you. There is a king in you. Somebody touch yourself right now and say, I got the power to reign in life. I got the power to reign in life. You have power that you haven't even manifested. You have authority that you haven't even manifested. You've been taking all of the devil's crap. You've been taking all of the devil's foolishness. Everything that life's been throwing at you, you've just been taking it and carrying away and saying, God, help me. God, God's waiting for you to understand your authority. You have the power to reign in life. I've got the power. I've got the power. I've got the power. When we look at David and Goliath, David comes down to the valley of Elah. His brothers are there as, as soldiers in Saul's army. The armies of the Israelites are there. And they're all quaking in fear when David gets there because of a colossal calamity called Goliath. Goliath is taunting them and, 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 and mocking not only Israel but mocking their God. Goliath is nine foot nine inches tall. His, his, his shield is 15 pounds. The head of his spear is 17 pounds. This is a monstrosity. This is a monster. A giant is facing them. Hmm. David arrives on the scene. Huh. David asks one question. David says, what shall be given to the man that kills Goliath? Uh, well, what is David really saying? What are you going to give me when I kill him? David looked at that huge problem that was bigger than him and saw him dead. Saw him dead because David understood that he was anointed. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David knew who he was. At that point, David had already been anointed three times to be king of Israel. So when David looked at Goliath, David saw a mountain that was standing in the way of his throne. David knew who he was. He knew that he was called to reign in life. And so he didn't go to Goliath. He went through Goliath. You're not going to your problem. You're not going to that calamity. You're going through that calamity. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, though I go through the waters and through the fire. I've got the power to go through anything, to manage, to function, and to succeed. David had a vision of his victory. David had a vision of his victory and Goliath was there. Goliath was showing her uh, of all of his power and all of his strength and his might uh, to intimidate her uh, and to hold them in fear. 
I want you to understand that the devil is in the details. Your victory is in your decree. I'm going to say it again. I want you to write that down. The devil is in the details. <laughs> the devil is in how big it is and how bad it is and how things have gone so wrong. What everybody is saying, what everybody is thinking. The devil is in the details. Get out of the details. David didn't want to know the details. David made a decree and his victory, your victory, is in your decree. Not in the details of what happened to you. Get out of the details and start decreeing your victory. I got the power. I got the power to command my morning and to rule my day. I've got the power to speak whatever I need. I've got the power to call things into existence. I got the power to thrive. You've got the power to thrive. I'm through. Your faith is telling you that you got the power. The essence of God in you is telling you that you got the power. All of creation is trying to tell you that you got the power. Paul told the Romans. That even creation, standing on tiptoes, waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God. Huh. The angels are not sons of God. The animal kingdoms are not sons of God. Hmm. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but to a such as received him gave he the power power dominion authority to be called sons of God if you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life you are a son of God you've got power and all of creation is waiting for you to manifest that power I want you to touch yourself one more time and say I got Power. Start using your power. Start using your faith. Start using the essence of God. Start communing with the Holy Spirit. Get out of your flesh. Stop being ruled by your mind, your thoughts, your aspirations, your fears, your intellect. Not by might, nor by human power, but by the Spirit, the essence of Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the first thing that you gave to humanity was power, dominion. You gave us the ability, not only the ability, but the right to manage, to function, and to succeed. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. That they would come to an understanding spiritually that they have the power to manage. They can manage life. They don't have to fail at life. They don't have to fall apart. But they can manage life. They can function and succeed. God, we know that the devil is in the details. We're getting out of the details today. We're getting out of what happened and how it made us feel and what the people said and, and who turned away and who did this. And God, today we're done with the details. We are decreeing our victory. I pray that every person that's hearing this today would decree their victory. The weak would say they are strong. The poor would say they are rich. The sick would say they are healed. The bound would say they are free. Jesus, we thank you. It's all because you gave power back to us. The power that Adam gave away. Jesus, you brought that power right back to us. You've made us a royal nation, a holy priesthood, a peculiar people. That we should show forth the praises of him that's called us out of darkness into marvelous light image light glory 
You've given us a level of glory. And we will walk in that glory. Because I got the power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you're not walking in right relationship with Jesus Christ, if you have not made him the Lord of your life, you don't have access to that power. That power is only accessed through him that died for our sins to correct what Adam had given away. That power is not accessed through religion. It's accessed through a relationship with Jesus Christ, the ability to manage, to function, and to really succeed. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life and start living the way that God designed you to live, it's simply simple as asking Jesus to come into your heart, to your spirit, to save your soul, to control your body. It's by believing that he died for your sins, that he was buried to take your sins away and that he resurrected on the third day with victory for your life and your future. And if you believe this and you declare it, then you are saved. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. We want to fellowship with you. We want to love on you. Be blessed today. Go into your day and your tomorrows declaring, I got the power. God bless you. Well, amen. And let the people of the gods of the and let the people of God say amen we want to thank our pastor for that powerful word i believe change is taking place in your life and as the word of god declared that if we hear his word we ought not to harden our hearts i pray that you will receive it and when you receive it it will allow the perfect fruit to grow into your life I'm, my prayer is that you enjoy the rest of your week take this word with you into your week and i believe it will allow great things to take place. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our service. Stay blessed.